Hey y'all, today we're going to make some, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's going to be moonshine made from rice, I've got sweet rice, I'm going to carry sweet rice on my website now too, I'm going to carry Shanghai yeast balls, and I'm going to carry some koji, in case you want to make this at home and you can't find this stuff locally, we got it at philbillymoonshine.com. Got sweet rice. We're gonna make it with sweet rice, Shanghai yeast balls, and koji. I was gonna put some fruit in it, but I think this time I'm just gonna do the basics and then you could take it to the next level. Also, in the future, I would like to do this with a little bit of with a little bit of fruit and some corn and make like a, a Japanese inspired whiskey. Put it on some wood. That would be awesome. But right now, I just want to make a base spirit. I want to do it my way. Um, koji is uh, yeast with mold growing on it. And these Shanghai yeast balls have a type of mold on it. And the mold will take the sugars, will take the starches from the rice and act like amylase. So the mold will act like amylase, turn the starches... And the sugars turn the starches into sugars from the rice. It's really cool. It's cool that they, they make sake over in Japan and that they've figured that out over the years. It does take a, a, a little bit longer to work. Whereas amylase is immediate, it takes us, you know, probably up to 30 days to convert them sugars to be fermentable. So this is a long haul fermentation. But hopefully it tastes great and it's well worth it. If you want to make this at home, like I said, by the time you watch this, I should have this stuff on the website. It's gotten to be pretty pricey, so if you find it locally for cheaper, that's where it's at. But, you know, shipping and everything will be involved in our pricing. But I'll have, uh, I'll have five pound bags. This has got a hole in it. <laughs> Uh, five pound bags and ten pound bags uh, two different companies same exact sweet rice sweet rice is pretty much sweet rice check this out put five gallons of water in a pot bring it to a boil Once it comes to the boil, cut that heat back almost all the way. So I add our rice. Look at that. Sweet rice. Keep it stirred. Keep it stirred. 25 pounds of sweet rice. Let it burn. Stand over it, keep it stirred until that rice is good and cooked. Come back to you in a minute. There we go, 25 pounds of sweet rice. It's almost all the way cooked. I cut my heat off. This will continue to cook until it cools down. So I'd say in about an hour or two, I'm going to come back and test it. And uh, I'll take a bite of a, a, you know, a couple grains of rice, and if it's cooked all the way through, then I'll, I'll put some cold water in here, cool it down the rest of the way. Then I'll add my koji. We'll come back to you when, when it's time. See you in a couple hours. It's been a couple hours. She's gotten really thick. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, 
solid almost. some water, <clears throat> thin her out just a little bit so we can work with her. Now I'm going to dump it in this, this mash barrel right here. Come back to you once we, once we dump it. I've never done this before. This is the way I'm doing it. It's not any traditional way. I am going to use Koji. I am going to use Shanghai yeast balls. But this isn't a traditional uh, anything. This is my take on rice. Rice, rice, baby. Let's see how it comes out. I'm going to fill it full of water. I'm going to add some Koji. That shit is so thick you can almost stand on it. That's like water and cornstarch mixed together almost. Anyways, uh, over the next two to three weeks, that koji should break down those starches and turn them into sugar, glucose. Um, I don't know how much sugar is in sweet rice. I'm willing to bet it's not 40 pounds of sugar, so I'm going to add half sugar. I'm going to add 20 pounds of sugar, 25 pounds of sweet rice, a package of koji, and I haven't added the yeast. I'll show you me adding the yeast. I'm going to go grab a bag of sugar. All right, I got a bunch of Shanghai yeast balls. I'm gonna take about six of them, smash them up into a fine powder. I'll show you. job in a few days I'll check on it every few days at the end of it I might pitch a little bit of, of, uh, of in a couple weeks I'm gonna check on it also check on the gravity and if there's still sugars in there I might pitch a little bit of uh, angel yeast yellow label it's another uh, good yeast for this type of stuff all right it's been 17 days and this is still a little sweet so to help it along i'm gonna add a little bit of this angel yellow yellow label if you can't find this i sell it on my website check it out it's really good yeast All right, I'm going to let it sit for, for another week, and then I'm going to check it. It's been a little over a month. It's done fermenting. I'm going to put it in my pot uh, with a with my pond pump, and uh, I'm going to start the heat up. All right, so straining this is a little harder than I thought. This is what this has turned into. Look at that. That's no longer rice. And I reached down to the bottom of that. There's not really much rice left at all. Like, it's dissolved into liquid, but the liquid's kind of thick. Still a little bit. I don't know. Like, there's... This is thick when this is in it, but once you get it out, it's, it's good and thin, but... So this is pretty tedious. I think this is worse than doing potatoes, but 
you know, I want to try something new. Let's see how this tastes when we run it through the still. Look how messy this shit is. <clears throat> All right, so this shit seems a little thick to me. I don't want it to settle. So while it's heating up, I'm going to reach in the top. I'm going to keep it stirred till it starts rolling. You know what I mean? Like, keep it moving. I don't want anything in here to settle, burn. So, uh, now I don't know if it would, but just in case, <clears throat> until this thing's about, I don't know, close to 180 degrees, and I just cut her on. So, I cut her on, cranked her all the way up, full blast. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to keep her stirred up from time to time, about every, I'd say every 20 minutes I'm gonna come in here open this up stir it up make sure nothing settles all right so I'm filling up my my cooler and I'm gonna turn on my my water chiller and this pump right here goes into here and then it shoots water through this chiller and it comes in at the bottom of my worm and I have a little regulator right here. That way I can control how much and how fast water goes in here. And the water just goes in <coughs> the top spout and that just goes right back to the cooler. You know what I mean? I've had this water in this chiller for the last month. I don't give a damn. Um, but yeah, you just regulate it right here with how fast it goes. See now it's up above and it's gonna leak out and go in there. And when I lift that up, I just messed it up. There we go. So every once in a while you'll hear that weird ass noise. And one thing to know about these chillers is uh, until you're pushing water through it, you don't wanna cut it on. Um, the, these things are easy to operate. All I had to do was plug it in, and it's going to kick on here in a second. I didn't even have to push a button. As long as this little power button down here is on. This has got the settings saved from the last times I've ran it. And all I do is I make it as cold as possible. That's it. Which is 39 degrees is as cold as this thing can go. But you got your water in, shoving through a pond pump. Water out. Going to the bottom, water back too. You want a still like this, this is called the Phil Billy Still, copperstillco.com. Check them out. It's not running yet. Just started. She's running. This is heads. I'm gonna dump that a whole other one. I'm gonna get rid of a half gallon of heads. The heads are coming off 140 proof. So that's, that's a decent proof. I'll take it. I'm about to go dump this in the fire pit. All right, I got rid of a half gallon worth of heads. This is my second jar. Uh, we're gonna run it, keep running it, see what happens. All right, I'm gonna call out a run. I'm still running tails over there, but uh, as far as hearts, I think I'm finished. I, I think it started out really, really perfumey, and it mellowed out about here, from here to here. This is what I like it. Um, Totally different from anything you're ever else gonna run. It is is wild how different this is. It has a distinct flavor. Totally different from anything you ever run, but it's good. And uh, I think I think you ought to try it. Why not do some rice? Rice, rice, baby. You know what I mean?
I'm going to call that a win. Uh, see y'all later.